Since I did a video showing some INAV4 testing with return to home and position hold, I've had a flurry of requests about what components I'm using, how I've mounted them and how it's all set up. I've been using this awesome AOS 7 quad to test INAV4 and there's a full build video on this coming very soon. But in answer to all the questions, I'm using the Matek M9N 5883 GPS and compass module. And the flight performance with this is stunning. Very accurate position hold and return to home, plus an excellent time to first fix. And I've never seen less than 20 satellites. Even in a built up area around my house in the garden, it's fantastic. And out in the field, I see upwards of 28 satellites. The Ublox M9N GNS module is a fantastic performer. But the other big contributor is Matex choice of antenna. Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. This is YouTube, you know what to do. Subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. The Matex M9N5883 combines this Ublox Neo M9N GPS module and this guy down here is the QMC 5883 3-axis compass. And it uses this very high performance ceramic tail glass patch antenna on the top. And it's also got this backup battery to power the M9M backup RAM. And I assume this stores the last known satellite so this can warm start. Now a cold start on this takes around 25 seconds and a hot start is about two seconds. So once you've locked in some satellites for the first time, they're cached for next time in the RAM in here. And it can receive and track the four major GNSS systems, GPS, Galileo, GLOSS-NAS and BEDO, concurrently with an accuracy of about a metre, which is exceptional. Now, this tailglass patch antenna is much bigger than the ones you might be familiar with on one of these cheaper M8Q GPS modules. And there's a reason. This has got a much better gain and a radiation pattern than this small antenna here, which gives it higher location accuracy, better lock reliability, even in urban areas, and better reception with more satellites acquired and importantly, a much quicker time to first fix. That just means you don't have to wait around to find satellites like you'll probably be doing if you're using one of these older M8Qs. Now, Maytech have quite properly designed this PCB to have a full ground plane on each side of the board. And this is extremely important to make the antenna work at its best. Now, all this performance isn't free because this is more than twice the cost of this M8Q. These are around $25 and the M9N is about $60, but you do get what you pay for. These are both supported in Betaflight and INAV. If you just want GPS for rescue mode on Betaflight, I suggest using this cheaper M8Q module. But if you want accurate position hold and return to home, or even waypoint missions on INAV, use the M9N module. Where and how you mount the GPS module is absolutely crucial to how well it works. Maytek recommend this is at least 100 millimeters away from any battery leads, ESCs or motors, and it's designed to be mounted flat and not tilted. So if you've ever seen GPS mounts like this. These are fine for beta flight for rescue mode where accuracy doesn't really matter. But if you want great position hold and so on in iNav, you have to mount it well away from all that EM noisy stuff. Now this high rise mount that I designed is far enough away from the battery leads and the motors and it's horizontal. Yes, I know. <laughs> When you're in forward flight, the GPS module will be tilted. And that's why these angled mounts are designed like they are, like this one. But when you need accurate position and orientation, the quad is going to be hovering or flying slow, so it's going to be flat. 
Now, this mount uses the Matec 3D printed STL file for the case of the module here. And I've modified it with a small bracket underneath. And this screws onto a couple of laser cut acetyl plates. And the frame mount on here is 3D printed. With the wires running neatly down the back there. Don't use TPU for these because it needs to be stiff and not wobble all over the place. And not just because GPS and compass don't like it, but also because it introduces unnecessary frame resonances. And all the nut and bolts on the top here are nylon, just in case. And these 3D printed parts are made from CPE, which is pretty tough. And the whole mount is quite stiff. Now, a high rise mount like this pretty obviously is vulnerable in a crash compared to a short angled TPU mount like this. But CPE and acetyl are relatively strong. Don't go using PLA for any of these 3D prints because it will break the instant you land inverted. Now, the M9N module is directional. There is a little arrow on here if you can catch it. But you can easily change the orientation of this in the INF configurator if the wiring is going to be awkward for you. The connections in here are pretty straightforward. Six connections are needed and there's identical plugs so you can mount this any way round. You need five volts and ground for power. The compass uses the I2C bus so connect CL on here to I2C SCL on the flight controller and connect DA on here to I2C SDA on the flight controller. And the GPS uses any spare UART you've got. So connect RX on here to TX on the flight controller and TX on here to RX on the flight controller. Now you can plug a USB lead into your flight controller to power everything up. Now do make sure you've done a basic setup and calibration on here before you start trying to do any of the GPS and compass setup. Otherwise, you're going to get very confused. Okay, in iNav configurator, we need to connect. And you need to enable the GPS and the compass. So, on the ports page, you need to change the sensor on the UART that you've got it connected to. In my case, it's UART4. So we just change that to GPS and we hit save and reboot. Okay, and then on the configuration page, you need to turn on GPS here and select U blocks and you need to set the ground assist to your area or just auto. I'm going to leave it on European. And we can hit save and reboot. So hopefully now, when you go back in, the GPS sensor should be on. But if you're indoors where there's no signal, it'll be red like this. So now is a good time to go outside and check its acquiring satellites and calibrate the compass. So when you're outside, go to the calibration page and select calibrate compass. And you need to rotate the quad in each axis for 30 seconds. Go around this way, this way, roll, and pitch and your. Make sure you, when you've finished, you put it back down. There we go, that's done. Now it's a bit of a pain doing all that when you've got this USB cable connected on here, but you can trigger the compass calibration using your transmitter. So if you just Connect a battery up, connect everything up, make sure you've got no props on it. Grab your transmitter, make sure it's turned on. And then move the sticks into this position, like that. 
you'll get a beep which tells you that the calibration has started and you just do your rotations as before make sure you do it inside 30 seconds and when the calibration's finished the cob will just beep but make sure you do all of this well away from any metal because that will screw the results up completely now while you're outside this is a good time to do the next really important step and that's to make sure that the compass on here is correctly oriented basically so when it says it's pointing north it is so have a rough idea of where north is and point the quad in that direction and if we go to the setup page you'll see the heading now that's pointing roughly north so that is pretty much correct so you're looking for anything around north to 360 degrees which is the same point so now if you point the quad east that way this should change to around 90 degrees move that around there there we go if that's correct then you're pretty much done now if either of those is wrong you need to tweak the mag alignment of the compass on here that's easy enough to do you just go to the configuration page scroll down here and this is the option that you want and there's pretty much every combination that's possible in here so I suggest just fiddle with it until the heading works correctly but remember to save and reboot each time you do that well it all sounds pretty easy doesn't it but every quad I've ever built with GPS and compass is never right first time if the GPS is enabled but not working you've probably wired the UART TX and RX wrong TX on the module goes to RX on the flight controller and vice versa same with the compass make sure that CL goes to SCL and DA goes to SDA on the flight controller and double check the INAV configuration and in my INAV 4 testing the Matek M9N has been fantastic the position hold has been very accurate and totally rock solid and now I know I can rely completely on fail safe and return to home I'll be doing a whole load of long range and long duration tests I've also got a full build video on this coming very soon and I'm experimenting with this LiDAR and optical flow sensor for accurate position and altitude hold when there's no GPS signal as always thanks for watching and if you found this helpful why not subscribe or buy me a coffee to support the channel I'll see you next time